name is Elliot. Welcome to my weather show. This is season one, episode two. Please welcome Mr. Rob Failey. Thanks for having me, Elliot. Um, I'm the district administrator for the southwestern part of the Vermont Agency of Transportation. So I'm responsible for all the maintenance that happens on the highways out there, whether it's plowing snow or patching potholes, all those for folks I'm responsible for. Where do you get your weather sources from? We get our weather from a number of different sources. We have um, the Albany, the National Weather Service out of Albany and out of Burlington. We get detailed forecasts from them. And then we also work with um, Northern Vermont College. It used to be Linden State College. And they've got a meteorology program. And the senior level students there, they give us detailed forecasts for every single district in the state, which are eight districts and they give us really specific forecasts. And we also have weather stations, about 45 of them around the state, and they have, um, it tells us everything from wind speed and wind direction to temperature, and they have cameras, and they tell us what the road surface is like, whether it's wet or icy or snowing. Or, so it's really, really helpful. We use a lot of tools uh, that help us predict what the weather we're gonna get. How soon before a snowstorm do your crews put the brine, the brine on the roads? Well, that's a good question because we used to put brine on the roads before storms. Um, we thought when the snow first hit, it would help it melt that first initial shot before we got out there. But the timing of the storms was always a problem. So sometimes we'd spray the brine on the road and then the snow didn't come in until much later than was expected. So the brine would wind up drying up. So we don't really do that anymore, but we spray brine on the road as part of our winter maintenance operations. Which roads do you put it on? Does it go on just main roads, side roads, or all roads? Well, it goes on all the main roads. All, all the state highways have numbers. So any of the numbered roads you see, whether it's an interstate or you know a state highway, we'll have numbers. But when our state roads go through towns and villages, a lot of those towns and villages uh, maintain their roads themselves. But you know, locally, um, US 7 and Vermont 7A and Route 30 and all those are all state-maintained highways. How does the temperature impact when you apply it to the road? So temperature plays a really important factor for us. Um, when it's, say, 15 degrees or below, uh, the salt we put on the roads doesn't really work that well. Uh, it seems like uh, it takes a lot more salt just to melt the same amount of snow than it normally would, say, at 30 degrees. So we really have to time it just right. Um, if there is um, a storm that comes and, and uh, it's really cold, we may just put a little bit of salt on the beginning of the storm, and then we'll just plow throughout the whole storm until it's time to clean up. And then we'll clean up and we'll use a little bit more salt. But temperature does play a really important factor. Hi, my name is Elliot, and we are live from the Vermont Trans Garage in East Dorset. So we are going to talk about a few things, and plus we are going to talk about what brime is. How many trucks do you have in your garage? Well, this garage we have about five trucks, but for the, uh, the southwest region we have about 50. And it takes about 80 different men and women to operate those vehicles um, so we can keep the road safe. What is brine? Okay, well brine is just water and salt. And you add water to the salt and it dissolves and it creates a salty, basically, water, which is called brine. And we like to get it so it's about 19% salt uh, in the water and that helps us melt snow a little bit faster. What we do is we spray it directly on the salt. So when we spread salt on the roads, the wetted salt sticks to the road a little bit better because if it was dry salt we put on the road, about 30% of it would bounce off the road into the ditches and it wouldn't do any good for us. How many, how many transportation department garages do you have in southwest Vermont? Um, I have 13 different garages in the southwest corner, which makes up of all of Bennington County, all of Rutland County, and a few little pieces of Wyndham, Addison, and Windsor County. So there's about 65 towns or so that we impact. How much salt do you have to have in the car 
in order to... In each truck? Yes. So this, uh, the truck behind us is one of our smaller trucks. Um, that carries about 1,200 gallons of brine and about eight tons of salt when it's full. Our bigger trucks also have about 1,200 gallons of brine, but it carries about 12 tons of salt. So it's a little bit bigger capacity on the salt. And that helps when we have longer routes and the driver doesn't have to come back so frequently to refill with salt. What is the capacity of brine in your garage? Okay, so each garage has a number of tanks, um, usually between two and four tanks. They're each 6,000 gallons. Uh, we make it and distribute it all out of the East Dorset facility here. Usually go through about 750,000 gallons a year. That's a lot. You do it for every storm? Well, we put salt down in every storm. Salt works better. It melts more snow when it's on the warmer side, like right around freezing. Once the temperatures drop down, like say in the teens or even lower, it takes a lot more salt to melt the same amount of snow. And also our brine doesn't work as well because we have to worry about it refreezing on the road. So uh, what we do is we try to, we have an additive that we add to the brine that helps it melt snow at colder temperatures. But if it gets really cold, we don't use brine at all. Then what do you use? Well, we keep plowing and we use salt. And if it's a little icy, we may sprinkle a little bit of sand in there too to help get the roads a little gritty for traction. How often do you do that? How often are we out plowing? Yeah. Well, we try to get out there right when the storm starts. We really get out there before the school buses are out there because we want to make sure commuters going to work and all the kids going to school get there safely. So we, our folks are up really early to do that. And then uh, we just keep at it throughout the day. And, um, and then if it's nighttime, if it's a long storm, like a two-day storm, uh, there'll be just a few folks out at night, but we really try to keep motorists safe during the day. They're going to show you how they dump the brine out of the truck. Step up here, make sure you hold on to the handle. Okay. Yeah, the air temperature in here is 59 degrees, but the road temperatures are 52. So. As you get the salt wet, so when the salt gets on the road, it spreads and it makes a, like how Rob said, it makes the snow melt quicker. And this one, it's for the spray bar in the back of the truck so you can get the wider width of the road of the lanes to get them all wet so they can melt. Then I can go down to the storm totals. Oh, okay, this looks good. Yeah, storm this totals. This is like really good technology. The storm totals will tell me how much salt I put out for that night and it'll tell me how much brine I put out. And I can go to the fill tanks. So that will tell us if my brine tank in the back of my truck, that's full or empty. And it's pretty much full. Yep. So if we're plowing at nighttime, we have a light looking at our auger. We got one here coming out of our uh, our wing. Yep. Strobe lights in our truck so everybody can see what we're doing. So we put caution so everybody knows what nobody hits us. Okay, that looks perfect. Yeah. We are now going out to the station where they take it up. Yeah, so this is the building that we make our brine in. Yep. Uh, There's a big water line that comes in from East Dorset that supplies all the water we use to make the brine. And then we take salt out of one of our salt buildings. So this is the hopper where we put the salt. If you look in here, this is the salt we use. So this is comes, all? This salt comes from Egypt. Can I, can I feel sure. it? Sure. It comes over on a barge from Egypt. So we dump the salt in here, and what we do is we slowly, there are pipes that go through the bottom of this hopper, and they're filled with water. Salt slowly dissolves in the water. It's just salt, it's almost like just table salt, except it's not in the pure form. It just comes out of a thick mine. And so as the water goes through, it slowly dissolves the salt, and eventually we get the right salt content in the water, and that's what brine is. It's just water with salt dissolved in it. So each of these tanks are filled with brine, 6,000 gallons in each tank. Okay, that looks good. So I hope you found it amazing. So, and thank you, Mr. Fowley, for, for letting me tour your garage. You're welcome. Anytime, Elliot, really. Okay. If a small isolated area was affected by severe weather, how does the road crews know that area, that area needs attention? 
that's that's one of our biggest challenges, actually. And that's a really good question because um, with our mountain areas here, um, sometimes clouds can get sucked in in a, a valley location, and five or ten miles down the road, it may be sunny. So it's really hard. Um, we we rely on partners like Vermont State Police and local law enforcement. They've got patrollers out there all the time, and they are pretty free with giving us a phone call. We also use those weather stations I was talking about. And when anything is predicted, we have patrols out there. And we may not be out there actively plowing, but we may have somebody driving around checking on all the conditions of the road to see if uh, they need to call in some more people to help plow the roads. What information can you give to the public on stay, staying, staying safe on, on the roads during snowstorms? Well, you know, number one is uh, having the right type of tires and equipment for the road. But, you know, we always say slow down. That's, that's the biggest factor. Speed is the biggest cause of crashes in the wintertime. So we like to think, you know, at least 10 miles an hour below the speed limit is a good starting point. But a lot of times you need to slow down even much further than that, depending on the road condition. We also tell folks to keep enough room for between the vehicles in front of you, because if the road's snow covered, it takes a lot longer to stop. And one of our biggest messages that we've been pushing out lately is um, don't crowd the plow. Our plow truck drivers, they're big pieces of equipment. They've got plows. They have a lot of blind spots. A lot of people don't realize that when they're driving in a, a passenger car. So, you know, give the plow plenty of room. We'd hate to see somebody try to pass a plow and then hit a slick spot and then they wind up crashing into the plow. We've seen it too many times. So, so give the plow plenty of room. Don't crowd it. And... I think people will be much better off. I brought something. Thank you for having me, and thank you for your interest in the weather. And I brought you a hat from VTrans as a souvenir. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to do an interview with me. Thank you, Elliot. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Welcome back. We are going to tell you the top 10 worst snowstorms in Vermont. Number 10. January 25th through 28th, 1986, with 19.7 inches. Number 9, November 25th, 1900, with 20 inches. Number 8, the storm of the century, March 13th through 14th, 1993, with 22.4 inches. Number 7, March 5th and 6th, 2001, with 22.9 inches. Number six, January 13th through the 14th, 1934, with 24.7 inches of snow. Number five, February 14th through 15th, 2007, with 25.7. Number four, March 6th through 7th, 2011, with 25.8 inches. Number three, the Christmas snowstorm of 1969. December 25th through the 28th with 29.8 inches. The top two are Winter Storm Stella, March 14th through 15th, 2017 with 30.4 inches. And number one is January 2nd through 3rd, 2010 with 33.1 inches. Now we are going to tell you the worst snowstorms by the month. January 2nd through 3rd, 2010, with 33.1. February 14th through 15th, 2007, with 25.7 inches. March 14th through 15th, 2017, 30.4. April 16th, 1983, 15.5. May 9th, 1966. June, July, August, and September, zero inches. October, the Halloween snowstorm of 1993 with 9 inches. November 25th, 1900 with 20 inches. December, the Christmas Day snowstorm of 1969, 29.8 inches. And my source is weather, the National Weather Service. Please enjoy the show and stay tuned into the next episode. And, and please stay safe in any snowstorms. <laughs> <laughs>